Hey everybody, welcome to the Design a Shirt podcast, Spill the Tea. I'm your host, Dallas, here with Jesse again, ready to excite you and wow you with some new information. How are you, Jesse? I'm doing good. You know, I was thinking today, what might be interesting is to tell our listeners a little bit about the three different businesses that exist under one roof here. What do you think? I think that's a good idea. Uh, it's easy for customers to find Design a Shirt, the company that we work for, because we are an e-commerce company. But under our building, we primarily have three companies operating. We have Design a Shirt, we have Anton Sports, and then we have Anton Uniforms. So essentially, Design a Shirt, I've been working for Design a Shirt for over eight years now, and we are an e commerce site where the functionality purpose of it is for customers to be able to utilize our interactive design studio, create their shirt that they need to have printed or whatever apparel product that they need to have printed and customers have the ability to place the order through our website without any interaction from our customer service team if they choose to go that route which is totally fine um aside from that we have anton sport which is the company that's been around for over 30 years now it's the company that our owners started and they primarily handle local customers and have that more traditional handling where every single customer or account is assigned to a specific rep and everything that that customer needs will always go through that rep. They can't go to the Anton Sport website and upload a logo and place an order. They go through their rep who do utilize our art team to create the proofs they need to get any pricing they need, they go through the rep to process the order, order approvals, everything like that will always go directly through the rep. The customer has much more one-on-one -on -one handling uh, in that type of a sense, it's more of a traditional vibe. So that's great for local customers, especially because a lot of times they would like the option to come in, look at samples and things like that to help them decide the products to use for their business. And the reps at Anton Sport do a great job with handling those types of customers and meeting their needs. Design a shirt has that ability, but not quite as easy as the Anton Sport team does since everything that we do for our customers, if we are handling an order or not, it still has to be processed through our online design studio. Right. So the when like for example let's say a customer who is local finds design a shirt and gives us a call and we recognize that design a shirt may not be the best option for them because they prefer to have that rep assigned to their account that they can contact on a regular basis stop in whenever then they're in the area and that rep can be available for them and have a much more one-on-one -on -one handling so it's not necessarily a competition. We really work well together in recognizing where is a local customer best suited. If right. they still plan to do most of the handling themselves and they prefer to go ahead and utilize our design studio, process their orders and get everything taken care of online, that's great. Then Design Assured, of course, is a great option. But if they are a local customer who prefers to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction, then we may recognize that Anton Sport is a better place for that customer to be placed. And in the end, we simply want to make sure that the customer is handled appropriately Absolutely. and is happy. And so we'll, we'll have those conversations with local customers to make sure that uh, we place them with the appropriate company. It's interesting because both companies have uh, customers that are large in scale. Design Assured has worked with PayPal, uh, Anton Sport has worked with SRP, right, Salt River Project. So there's there's large customers from both sides, and it really you're just what you said. It depends on the needs of the customer. Um, design shirt in itself is more of a screen printing for T-shirts, digital or, or screen printing. Even though we have the ability to do embroidery, it's not something that's not it's not on the site as easily as you know a walk-in customer for Anton Sport. But also. We have the ability to do promotional products, which we don't really push on Design a Shirt, and we have a large showcase where people can come in and see them for, for sport. So uh, it could depend on the product, the need, the hand-holding requirement, 
some people are comfortable with uploading a photo of a cheeseburger onto a t-shirt and printing it on design a shirt, right? Where uh, if you aren't comfortable with that, walk on in and we'll get the file from you and upload it for you for sport, you know, or depending on the size of the company. So uh, the most important thing is, is that whether or not the website suits your needs uh, or if you need some handholding, we have a solution in either, either company all under one roof. Absolutely. What... Both companies will do a great job with being very responsive to customer inquiries. It's simply a matter of what makes the most sense. Right. So with Design Assured, of course, we have a large group of customers who will request products that we don't offer through our website because we realize that they have special handling, the sizing may be unique in comparison to other products we offer. The product selection that we have on Design Assured is more of a foundation of options so customers don't get too overwhelmed but we do have customers who will always use products that we don't offer through our website and our reps at designer shirt have the ability to custom quote and custom uh, place those orders for customers along that nature it's it's simply a matter of kind of where the customer lands right. sometimes but local customers primarily we have the ability to strategically place them Design Assured, since we are an online company, we work with customers all over the country. So if we have customers all over the country who would like unique products or promo products, of course, absolutely, our reps are going to be available to walk them through proofing, quoting, right. and placing those orders too. Right. Well, you're doing some promotional products for Sony right now too through Design Assured. Yeah, we are. So what, what are those promotional items that do not exist on the website that people might not know that we have access to? Yeah, so Sony needed some swag. So the promo products that they ended up getting were these aluminum bike bottles. They're going to end up looking really sharp. They're metallic black aluminum bike bottles with the Sony logo that's going to be printed vertically on these metallic black water bottles in white. It's going to look really clean. And then they're also getting totes. Totes are always very popular for events, especially because you can put a bunch of stuff in them, whether right. it's stuff that you are giving away or stuff that the participants collect throughout the event totes are always a perfect option so sure. the totes they're getting are called fun bags and they're getting a bunch of those as well with a nice sony dealer boot camp logo on it right. it sounds like it's for an annual event yeah they have that they're event. having i'll shout out to mobile solutions here in tempe arizona i'll uh, i'll tag them on the podcast they're hosting an event and sony certainly positioning itself as a leader in the car audio industry so it's good to see that they're doing something um more than just t-shirts a fun swag bag that uh, is very unique and high quality items too i'm really excited too because sony just placed another order today for hats oh great and rather than getting standard embroidery which always looks really nice i always without a doubt will recommend embroidery on hats over printing any day but they're even taking it a step up a notch and they're getting their sony logo in puffed Good. embroidery on the front of the hats great and I'm so excited. It's going to have such a retail look to it. It's going to look really sharp. And I'm glad that they trust us to use more of a unique embellishment method like that. I'm really excited to right. see how they turn out. And hopefully they are too. We did that with the local radio station, 98 KPD, and, and they turned out phenomenally. I mean, it's such an elevated look above the traditional flat embroidery that you would see at a uh, no offense to Tilly's or any of those brands, but right, you might see a very large production, very basic embroidery. Uh, this steps it up in, in every single way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we also have a third company under the roof as well, which is Anton Uniforms, which primarily services uh, schools in, in the area, um, which is unique in itself because not every school offers the same products. Uh, while that one exists under the same roof, it's a bit different because it's a bit seasonal. Mm -hmm. um, it takes it does occupy some space in our building. Doesn't necessarily use the same screen printing uh, machinery that Anton Sport and Design Shirt share, uh, but certainly if you have any uniform needs, we have access to that. We do. There's a lot of prep and private schools here in Arizona. I'm not from Arizona, so the, the amount of schools here just blows my mind. But it's a really nice setup. Anton Uniforms has all of the patches that are for the various schools that we are contracted with and whether you need cardigans, vests, polos, 
rompers, skirts, etc. Everything that's required for the kids attending these schools, we have available at Anton Uniforms, and it's really nicely set up for right. those for those parents. What an easy way to be able to come in and say, uh, "What does my school uh, approve? What what am I allowed to wear?" So since we already have access to all of that information, there's no guesswork as to did I get the wrong thing. Uh, we know. Right oh, away. exactly. I mean, as a parent, we're both parents. Going back to school can be stressful between the apparel requirements and then all of the school supplies. There's a long list of things that are required. And so Anton Uniforms, we know exactly what those schools need and require. So we try to make it as easy for those parents as possible. They don't have to run to 10 different stores to piece together their kids' uniforms. Right. It's all in one place. It's very well organized. And the employees at Anton Uniforms do a really great job with taking care of those customers. They do. And that business is, has grown not only uh, the brick and mortar side, but online as well. So. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable with shopping online, we do offer that. Uh, we do have fitting rooms here as well, so someone can stop by at any time. Yep. Okay, another thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about are upcoming popular items because we are moving towards the fall season, right? We and are. there's uh, Halloween's coming up. That's one for sure. I love Halloween. Let me ask you, when seasons like this approach and you have a holiday like Halloween, do you see an influx of Halloween-based designs? Is it just a random bag? What does that look like? We do see some. It seems like a lot of times Halloween tends to be a last-minute thing where I highly advise people to use a little bit of creativity and plan ahead. There are so many fun Halloween costumes that you can create using a t-shirt or even using a hoodie. And if you plan a little bit ahead, our standard turnaround time is simply 10 days, with our fastest turnaround being three business days. So even if you are a procrastinator, as long as you give yourself three days before Halloween, we could still get you something that you can utilize as part of your costume in time for Halloween. There are so many fun ideas that you can even find on Pinterest. One of my favorite designs that's so simplistic was I saw a guy wearing a forest green hoodie with forest green sweatpants and he had taken yarn and just tied yarn all over the hoodie and sweatpants to make himself look like a cactus. <laughs> and then and then when he put the hood on, the hood had like a cactus flower on the top of it. Right. And it was so simplistic, but so fun and creative. I mean, it was simply a cactus costume, but the way he went about doing it, I really appreciated it being in the industry that we're in. Right. And I even thought too, it could be fun even around the office to we always have a Halloween costume contest around the office, which is so much fun. But even considering it, incorporating like the t-shirt as a required element to the costume to see who can get the most creative with a t-shirt, which, eh, you know, I kind of backed off on that thought because I simply am excited for people to even dress up at all. But I know I'm going to be incorporating a t-shirt into my costume, and I'm really, really excited for it. We've posted some in the past. Uh, the Taco Bell mm -hmm. uh, hot sauce idea, uh, M&Ms or candies or emojis. People could put anything on, on a t-shirt. And like also, the royal flush with like the different cards from like a deck right. of cards it, and things like that. If you're going to do a group thing mm -hmm. and you want everyone to dress up, how easy is it to elevate your entire group? And we, I'm sure we'll run a, some sort of a promotion that people can jump on board with. What's important to what you just said was that as long as you take advantage of our typical shipping window, shipping's free. It doesn't mm -hmm. cost you anything extra. Yeah. So combine that with maybe a discount and you have a really good opportunity to be affordable and savvy when it comes to outfitting your entire crew. Yeah, you have a, and it's cost effective as well. Of course, I mean, there's nothing wrong if you want to go to Party City or Spirit Halloween and pick out a costume. That's great. But if you enjoy being creative and want a one of a kind costume and you can cut up or whatever you want to do to the t shirt to really make the costume unique and make it your own. I personally really enjoy things yeah. like that, and I know other people do too. It's a great opportunity for the crew to be dressed yeah. up rather than, than just how hard is it to tell all your friends, guys, we're going to go to Party City, and we're all going to be M&Ms. You all have to buy the same outfit. For like $70. Or like $70, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, print some basic shirts that, you know, you get to 6 or 12, depending on how big your group is, and you can get your shirt cost down pretty low. Absolutely. Okay. Um, we do have... In November, we do have Black Friday coming up. It's traditionally one of our, it is our largest sale of the year. 
Um, most often that sale will be 20% off. And it's, again, the only time of the year that we do that. It's big for us. A lot of people wait for that time. If you have a special need before then, certainly reach out. But if you plan on placing a big order, wait for that time. We'll do some fun promo or maybe give you guys a, a sneak peek at uh, taking advantage of that deal early if we can. But Yeah, we enjoy extending that offer around Black Friday. And we do have customers who know that we offer that discount each year and they wait to place their order until black friday so keep that in mind especially if you have a large event even like a charity walk things like that even if it's not until the beginning of next year i guarantee it will be worth it from a cost standpoint to purchase the items you need for your event on black friday from us you are going to get a killer discount that we don't offer at any other time of the year does our, our shipping window become any different? Do people need to be mindful because of the, the large number of orders that come in around that time? Not necessarily. No, our production crew really steps it up and they understand the demands, especially around holiday season from both a digital and screen print standpoint. It gets crazy in a really good way and everyone steps it up. We understand. We don't We don't question the time of year. We if Whatever volume we get, we figure out how to make it work. We have... A crew in the office we're very resourceful and we'll figure out a way to get it done so regardless of the volume unless you want to surprise us and blindside us with an order of 50,000 shirts which I will gladly take we may request a little bit more time on sure. that size of an order One but day. in general yeah <laughs> <laughs> Two in, days. in general though we will figure out how to make it happen we understand holiday season is crucial for a lot of people and deadlines have to be met so we will figure out a way to make it happen okay you know, I just posted, Vega Print did some of the water, was it the water-based ink that he had done recently where once you sweat, the, the or no, it wasn't, I'm so sorry. It was a UV the sensitive. The UV, the light sense, yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I had a request on Instagram after that asking if we have any of those special inks. And it's that's not something that we have that's set up on the website. But are there any fun inks? We discussed last time glitter, I think, maybe some heat transfer. But are there any special inks that you've seen that you think would be fun to experiment with? We do have a, a pretty good selection of inks here in the office. And if we don't have a particular ink that a customer requests, chances are we can get it. Our local ink guy is here multiple times a week and at times. And so if you come to us with a request that you are really excited about and want to make happen, we likely can figure out a way to make it happen. So whether it's the UV light sensitive ink, whether it's the ink that essentially we, we printed some shirts recently. I think it may have been for ASU where you couldn't see the design on the shirts until the shirt got wet or until you sweated in the shirt. Right. And once you sweat in the shirt, then the design appeared and it had a really fun look to it. So we do have some fun inks like that. We are always playing with other uh, print options, whether it's diluting inks to make them feel not so thick using water-based inks doing processes like simulated process for color process to get really colorful outcomes without having a ton of screen set up on the press it's a way to keep really fun colorful designs more cost effective on larger ish runs and things like that so we do have a lot of options we don't necessarily print those types of orders on a regular basis but we can likely make it happen Speaking of simulated, so most of us, I think from the co consumer standpoint, the customers don't really have to concern themselves so much with how we print, right. but, but they are different because they achieve different results in, in different looks. Could you tell, tell what the difference between simulated and a regular screen print process would be in terms of laying down ink? Well, in terms of laying down ink, that's not necessarily the highlight of each print purpose simulated process is more for a photograph let's take a photograph for example if you have a photograph you wouldn't be able to use traditional screen print because in traditional screen print you essentially have to pull apart each individual color in an art file and set up a screen for each unique color well a photograph has hundreds if not thousands of colors in it you can't make that many screens to print every single individual color in a photograph what processes like simulated and four color process give us the ability to do 
is line up various colors in a way to get a very detailed and colorful outline with keeping the number of screens limited. Like a skin tone or something like that. It's more, I from a customer standpoint, where I tend to focus is not complicating the print method itself with the customer. I like to extend approach it in a way of having them send us the, their vector art file and give us the variables of their order, such as the product, the fabric color, the fabric blend, and the quantity of shirts we need. And then we review that art file with our art team. And then we give them our expert advice on how we need to print the order to get optimal results. Right, more of an internal decision. Than yeah, rather than going through one. the details of this is the difference between simulated process and four color process and screen print and digital print. Well, That's going to be so overwhelming for the everyday that, person. But if you were to explain that to them, would you, would you use that voice? Yes, I would talk like this <laughs> the entire time. But it does. It can be really overwhelming for a customer who... This could be their first time ever being assigned the project by sure. their boss to order shirts and make them look fabulous for their event. And they're already stressing about making that happen and making sure their boss is happy with the product that they are in charge of. So rather than overwhelming a customer with detailed information about the various print processes, I'd rather just simply calm it down, essentially. Right. Reassure like, them, give them confidence that we're going to take care of them and simply explain to them what we're doing, why, and this is how we can guarantee that you're going to be happy with the outcome. Right. It'd be like going to a car mechanic to get uh, something fixed and they call you every 10 minutes. Well, it turns out the bolt needs to be turned <laughs> 92 degrees and we thought you should know. <laughs> exactly. I That would go over my head. You would know what they were talking about because even what you just said, I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know what 92 degrees are? No, I know what 92 <laughs> degrees is. <laughs> okay. Is, but from a mechanic standpoint, it would go in one ear and out sure. the other because I wouldn't sense. have any knowledgeable information to actually apply that information to. Like, great, you gave me this information. What am I supposed to do with it? Because I don't know what you're talking about. I just want to make sure my car gets fixed. Kind of right. similar with shirts too. You just rambled to me about so much detailed information that I know nothing about. So... I just want the shirts to look good. Can right. Are the shirts going to look good? Let me ask you this. Are there any situations where you have to opt to print digitally because you can't achieve the look that you want with screen printing? That does happen, especially when the customer doesn't have a true vector file. A true vector file that's editable, we can essentially make it, we can set it up in any way we need to based on what we think is going to work best. But if a customer has a raster file, right, a picture whether of it's themselves. a JPEG, a PNG, things like that, at times we can recreate it, set it up for screen print. And, and for simplistic designs, we can essentially work with almost any file provided to us. But if it's a very detailed image, like a photograph even, for example, digital print would be our option at that point. That makes sense. Uh, just because we wouldn't be able to use that low quality file to set up for screen print and have it look good. A lot of the colors would get muted. They would, a lot of details would get lost. It wouldn't look right. And the only other option besides digital print for something like that in general would be a heat transfer. I really, I like heat transfers for some things, but if you want a photograph across your chest it's going to feel like a vinyl shield on the t-shirt and it's not something that would be my top recommendation in that right. situation you know I, I just got a shirt at target for my daughter the other day and it said like team sister or something and it's in glitter and she absolutely loves it but she put it on this morning and she said it's too itchy and I said well, what do you mean so I went and I, I could feel the inside of it. And even though it's a beautiful print, the glitter looks great. It is very dense. You can feel it on the inside. So yeah. I think most people don't consider when I go shopping, do you feel the inside of the shirt? And it's unfortunate that sometimes it's not until you get home that you realize this shirt is uncomfortable. It, it's very true. And at times even we have challenges like that that we even get confronted with in production on products that we may not print on a lot of times. The material so, itself. Yeah, so what I think of, for example, is typically we print thousands and thousands of backpacks for schools. And for the longest time, the most popular product was an American Apparel canvas backpack. That was the only, pretty much the only backpack these students wanted. 
But then, you know, American Apparel claimed bankruptcy and they went through their whole situation and that backpack went away. So one of the backpacks that our customers wanted to try out was a backpack that wasn't completely canvas material. It had water resistant material on the inside of it for obvious reasons. Right. But with that in mind, we realized that you could feel the sticky adhesive that we have to spray on our boards during production to hold that backpack in place. You could, if you weren't careful with the amount of adhesive that you were putting on the boards, you could feel that sticky adhesive on the inside of the backpacks and we'd have to wipe it off. So that way when the customer opened their backpack and right. put something in it, they weren't feeling the sticky <laughs> material on the inside of the backpack and wondering what it was and where it came from and how do I get it off. But we recognized that and we fixed it and made sure that that didn't happen. It was simply a matter of controlling the adhesive, the amount of adhesive we were spraying. And if for whatever reason you could feel it, we simply have, you know, acetone essentially is what we use to wipe it off and it was fine. But it's just one of those things where when you work with products that are newer, it's you don't know until you get there. Sometimes. You don't know until it, it till that situation surfaces and then you figure out a way to fix it. Well, speaking of challenges, did you, did you run into anything unique this week? We had a customer who was convinced that we sent him knockoff beefy teas. Oh, what a bummer. So that was fun. <laughs> okay. so, <laughs> that, we get, that we get directly <laughs> from the vendor. That we get directly <laughs> from a vendor. And I don't know who on the wholesale side would find it convenient to produce knockoff Hanes beefy teas. Of the low, yeah, the but, most economical tea. Um, but it was unfortunate. And it was simply because he received an older batch of Hanes beefy teas that still had the old sewn in tag. Right on the collar and because he had received previous beefy tags that had the heat press on, like uh, tag on the inside of the shirt, he was convinced that this was not the same product and that it was a knockoff item and that we weren't sending him the premium Hanes beefy tea that he had ordered in the past that we sent him knockoff Hanes beefy teas. And we had to explain that that was not the case and right. last winter we ran into something with uh hoodies that were changed mid-run do you remember that one i do we, they were hoodies where i don't remember do you remember port it wasn't port we replaced with port but it was it was also hanes and and granted is <laughs> hey we love hanes we sure, love absolutely. hanes and of course every single brand out there they go through changes and they switch things up and they may whether it's the tag that they change or the hem that they change on like the bottom of their hoodie for example uh, certain uh, details change and that customer with the hoodie loved his hoodie that he had ordered two years ago and two years later Haynes had made a slight change to I think it was the hem right. at the bottom of their hoodie there was, it was a pretty subtle change but to him it really mattered and we weren't trying to undermine his concern it was great that he loved his Hanes hoodie from two years ago and wanted to get that exact hoodie again but that exact hoodie no longer existed and there that was something completely out of our control right and that's tough because you want to be able to provide the best solution but sometimes you can't and what's worth worth noting in that situation was that we sent the customer a couple different samples some blanks we did he decided that the port and company was his favorite and then we rescreened the job onto those hoodies and he was happy he loved it 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 turned an unfortunate experience where the customer was defensive in that situation same thing he was, he was upset that he couldn't get something which again out of our control but we found a way to make a, a solution that worked and he was happy exactly even if we in this case if we weren't able to get the customer the exact product that they were preferring we at least have other options we don't uh, we, we try to not ever make a customer feel like they have no options and that they're stuck we at least do our best to present at least a couple of options so that way we can come to a resolution that right. a customer is happy with that doesn't always happen but we at least try our best to present options to come to a favorable resolution right. it really is a double-edged sword because too many products on the website creates confusion people don't know what works best mm -hmm. and there's also the idea that if it's not on the website it's not for sale so it's the best thing is if there is something that you love or you're searching for a particular type of blank and i don't mean brand just i want something soft something light these are my goals reach out to us absolutely let us try and find a solution yeah it can be overwhelming even with the options that we do have online sometimes if you're looking at the short sleeve t-shirt category they all look the same they do <laughs> so 
it's, it's really helpful for us if a customer is unfamiliar with the brands we offer or has never ordered a custom t-shirt before, they can let us know, this is typically the types of shirts that I buy. This, these are the brands that I like, or here is right. where I shop. And even send us a, even a picture. Maybe some customers, the collar is really important to them. They don't want a collar that sits super high up on their neck to the point where they feel like they're suffocating. They would like a looser collar. Or some customers want sleeves that aren't super baggy. They like the sleeves that are a little bit tighter around their arms, which of course kind of depends on the size of your arms. So, <laughs> right. But you know, certain things like that, we would have no way of knowing if those things are important to a customer unless they communicate with us. So if something like that is high priority to you, rather than guessing based on model pictures that we get from the vendors that we work with, uh, let us know. Let us know, and then we can provide some recommendations and even send you some samples to help you choose a shirt that you're happy with. I ran into that last night where we we posted a Hall Halloween T-shirt, and it was saved on a very particular the the Bella Canvas uh, tribe line. Mm -hmm. And someone asked me for a sizing chart, and I didn't know exactly what the model was, so I I sent a DM to you and and Steph as well, and I said, "Hey, uh, is this the thirty four thirteen? Is that what it was? It was thirty four thirteen. That's what I thought. So as soon as I had that, I was able to send sizing information over. But it's interesting that even at an impulsive purchase of a pre-decorated T-shirt that's super affordable, sizing still matters. People want to have all of the data, read the reviews. They want to know everything they can to make sure that they're making a good decision. And that's really the world that we're in right now, shopping online. It's, it's Oh, my goodness. And the challenges of shopping online could be a whole other podcast for sure. But... There are certain people out there too where if it's a unisex shirt that's being happens to be modeled by a female, they then think that it's a shirt only for females. Right. So, you know, I mean, we do our best in a world where it can be a little confusing because visual components are still really important, especially when that's all you have when shopping online. So in some cases, it's even helpful to have that same unisex shirt on both a male and female. It is. Because then based on body type, stature, height, weight, etc., that helps people make a decision that they feel confident in making when choosing the size in that particular product. Right. You said, tell us where you shop. I think that is such an immense value for us to be able to look at a style and say, oh, we already know a similar characteristic type blank that you could order. Uh, which would be really helpful for anyone who's used to shopping in one place. Yeah, even in general, we used to have all of our ladies' shirts in the same category. And this was way long ago, like eight years ago when I first started here. We didn't have a separate juniors and women's category. Everything was in the same area on our online website. And it was really confusing for customers if they would order, for example, a next level ladies tee in small and then a Hanes mm -hmm. ladies tee in size small, they are sized significantly different because one is a junior shirt and one is a women's shirt. But if you have them all grouped together, that obvious differentiation isn't available. So now for quite a while now, we do have a separate juniors and women's category. And even when we try to make things very clear, we'll still get asked, well, what's the difference between the two categories? Can't I just size up in the juniors category and it'll fit me the same as the women's category and right. the answer is no if you go into a department store where do you shop do you head towards the junior section or do you go to the women's section that's the easiest way that i can try to explain that i don't go to either yeah, <laughs> you don't go to either but you know maybe you've shopped for <laughs> sure. someone else before but the thing is if you're in the juniors category and you normally wear a women's medium ordering a junior size large is still going to be something that's form fitting and tighter and still runs quite a bit smaller than that women's companion. So in those cases, especially for females, that can be really challenging. I get that. So right. definitely ask if you ever have concerns about how a shirt runs in terms of the fit and we can provide guidance from that angle too. Well, that's actually really good input because our new site, we've been working on sizing charts and an element of maybe some photos that fit different body types might be something that would be really helpful for people to decide what what works best. Absolutely. And that would be great for any, if there's any comments, if anyone ever has any feedback on sizing, we would love to hear it. We're in the process of building a better site for design a shirt that is faster, more mobile friendly, has more features, better suited for us. 
something that really has uh, evolved at, like we have evolved over the years. So any feedback is good feedback, and we take it all to heart, and we appreciate that. Okay, uh, the po- I just did a podcast with Kaylin over at Anton Sport, and I ended the podcast with two questions, and Uh-oh. I think I'm going to ask you the same. The first question would be, if you could have, you could wave magic wand and anything was fun, something new that's fun in our office, what would you want? And the second one would be, if you could vacation anywhere immediately, where would you go? I hope that this would be considered fun in the office. I legitimately have been pushing for a punching bag in the office. <laughs> and I'm not joking. I That sounds horrible. But I, <laughs> but I really have people think I'm joking. I legitimately would love to have a punching bag in the office. Right next to your desk or in a public space? Either or. Either or, I would be, I would be very happy. I, <laughs> it can, it really can at times. It doesn't seem like our industry really is so much fun, but it can be when you care so much. Certain times of year, especially, or certain events, certain situations, can really start to get you worked up a little bit, and you don't want that to affect your demeanor amongst your coworkers, amongst your team. And things like that. So I'm, I'm completely serious. I think it would be fantastic to have a punching bag that you can go out for like five or ten minutes and then come back to your desk and everything is sunshine and rainbows again. I wish I could animate a clip where a hundred years from now they replace us with robots. And then the <laughs> robots are so frustrated they're punching punching bags. That would be hilarious. Would it be like a robotic punching bag? I am frustrated. <laughs> okay. Uh, vacation. Vacation. Anywhere. I, you know, I really don't have a specific destination that's probably really pathetic but in general if i'm outdoors and it's nice weather whether i'm on the beach or i'm camping and have our kayaks have a tent set up i'm really not super picky about the location of course everyone you know in general can think of a really fancy cabana that's out in the middle of the ocean but I realistically would probably be so anxious at the thought of sharks sur- being surrounded by me. It probably wouldn't, wouldn't be as relaxing as it's supposed to be. So I don't really have a specific destination. I'm pretty boring, a.k.a. relaxed maybe. And I, I just, being outside, I'm, I'm happy with. <laughs> you may have overlooked the magic wand part of that question Did where I... you, you could go camp on the moon if you wanted. Oh, but we'll take, wand. but but that's okay. If I you... agree with that. Let's do that. <laughs> to okay. the moon. Okay. Okay. Wait. Hang on. <laughs> so, so now you can change your story, and you are going to pick the moon. I'm so boring. <laughs> you might want to bring some oxygen ah. with you <laughs> and a tent. Thanks for listening, and Jesse, as always, thanks for being a wonderful co-host. Always. Have a great day. Bye.